This week on Sail Away. It was nearly a year ago in Antigua that we began to show you the saga of our $15,000 paperweight. We're using our entire top half of the generator overhauled. Probably a head gasket issue causing power issues. We've also got probably one bad injector. So we're gonna be basically spending a lot of money on the generator. And now, after thousands of dollars, some hard decisions, and a whole lot of hassle later, the saga finally concludes, for better or for worse. Here's your passage drink. I did make a passage on know. the dinghy. It was a long passage. <laughs> Anytime and you leave the boat now, <laughs> you deserve it. I should get three, one for the dinghy, one for the scooter, and one for the taxi ride. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Hey, promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. <sighs> well, I'm off to pick up two more generator techs that apparently work as a team. Makes them twice as expensive and twice as good. These guys are from Omega Electric, which is fitting because I'm at the last straw with the generator. The Omega, the Omega straw. <laughs> and uh, it's the literally Omega thing I'm going to try before we figure out how to sell this thing and just yank it out. <sighs> so, fingers crossed these guys can come up with whatever it is that's wrong with this thing that I can't figure out. I just, I gotta say, I'm just at my wits end with technicians in the Caribbean because Wesley was you know he was an experience and we left there with a generator that still did not function and you know two bad water pumps and since then like we just can't get people to come do things uh, I had another guy that's highly recommended here in the USBI and super nice on the phone and kept telling me he was gonna give me a call in the afternoon for me to you know come pick him up to come look at it and just stood us up over and over literally over and over and then he just stopped answering phone calls and returning calls similar issues trying to get the mount for the wind generator built uh, hasn't been going on as long and this guy does seem like he's trying to figure it out he's missing the bending die for that size tubing but uh, I just called these guys today, and they're coming out today, so that's a good, good step in the right direction. We'll see what happens. So these guys are Umberto and Juan, and they do all kinds of generator, alternator uh, type work. And they have been super cool. They showed up when they said they were coming, and they've been trying really hard to figure out what's going on with this thing. At this point, they've ruled out the injectors and ruled out the injection pump. Unfortunately, we are down to the point where it's something inside the head, most likely, that's causing the problem. So, yeah, we've uh, arrived at a, a, a flat rate to pull the head off and come to a definitive answer as to what's wrong. And then it'll be up to us to decide if we can or want to proceed based on how bad it is. And if it's really bad, we may, at least we'll know what the problem is 
and maybe we can sell this thing with the knowledge of what it needs to somebody else. If it's super simple, by simple I mean affordable, uh, we'll have these guys finish up the job. Maybe something in between, maybe I could possibly do it myself or we'll just make that decision as we go. Hopefully in a short while here we'll at least know what's wrong with the generator and that in lo alone will feel like some kind of victory because I'm over it, I'm so over it. We're limping along on four batteries which is not enough for our needs here. We don't have a generator to help us supplement our charging and it rains constantly here over and over and over and that has really made it difficult to just keep things going it's hard for me to work because the inverter keeps cutting out it's just been very frustrating so this would be a huge win if we could just figure out what's going on with it because i'm kind of losing it right now in the meantime if nothing else but for my own sanity i fixed something out uh, with the old rusty gross nasty to end with the shiny new sometimes it's the small things in this case like anything else in a boat not that cheap but i did find it at defender for 68 bucks for this entire rail and the handset and the hose and all that it's just one of those things it makes the boat feel nicer and newer to have those kind of details not just look like crap but hey i fixed something the project from start to finish we're done i did it it feels like a huge accomplishment right now we have updates and it's not good uh, I'll let Eric explain all the details because I don't understand, but something is very wrong. It sounds like it was a problem before that just wasn't diagnosed. So technically everything that we have done, like the rebuilding and didn't hurt anything, I guess, but there is a big problem still with the generator and we have to figure out what we are going to do. <sighs> I can't say I'm like surprised, honestly. I don't expect any good news with regard to this generator at this point. After taking the head off and checking the valves and not seeing any problem with the valves, he noticed that that center piston is not raising all the way up to the even level with the top of the block like the other two do. And that's just an indication that something in that piston is loose. There's slop there. Whatever it is, could have happened when the motor overheated originally, could have been on its way, and then when we started firing it up and trying to run it after the rebuild, it finally like went all the way bad, whatever the problem is. But the bottom line is there's no fixing that without removing the generator. And to do that would cost a shitload of money from our perspective. Like we've already put several thousand dollars into this. Yeah. At least. At least. So you know, to to have the whole thing pulled, taken to somebody's shop, theirs or whoever's, the time and effort it takes to pull the entire crankshaft and pistons out, find out what's wrong, fix whatever it is, put it back together, whatever all that entails what kind of parts are required to reassemble it you know then a whole new head gasket and anything else you know needed to put this back together and like it's going to be a couple thousand dollars it has to there's just no way it won't be we've hit the wall i think we are finally to the point of it's it's got to go and we want to try to sell it I'm looking at this thing trying to figure out how we get it out of here when the time comes, but I guess that's a cross that bridge when we get to it kind of scenario. Merry Christmas. My precious. Part of our ongoing solution now for how we're doing things is 
this because we are going to kiss the generator goodbye. We need a good backup charging source to our solar and that's mainly what the generator did for us. So the main thing that we need to replace is the ability to charge our batteries quickly and truly charge them all the way up, top them up. Our alternator won't do that. This is a Balmar alternator and a Balmar Max charger. You can uh, set this to different battery profiles and this brand new version, they have our carbon foam batteries built in. And we've got our two new batteries they probably arrived today, but we just couldn't get a clear answer of whether they were ready for us to pick up. But tomorrow, I'm hoping I can go pick up those batteries. So I would love to have this charging source ready to go. It's getting dark and late. right in and it bolts in just like it should. This poor dog's been stuck outside all day. He's like, please let me in. Not yet, my man. Not yet. Well, we have a success, I believe. We just got our regulator and alternator working. Uh, one, two, three, the fourth step, a doozy. As I was saying, we did get everything running last night and it was charging very well. This is the Max Charge MC618 from Balmar. It's a couple hundred bucks, but you can control every parameter of your uh, battery charging within this. It also has pre presets for um, quite a few battery types. One of those, brand new to this model, is the carbon foam batteries, which are fireflies. You can do it all with this little magnetic screwdriver. But there's not much to show you. There's a little red dot right there. And you basically just hold the screwdriver on the red dot and it cycles through different menus. It was crazy easy to do. So once I fired it up and got that running, I was able to program that in. It's, it seems to be working flawlessly at the moment. Knock on multiple woods. We'll have one project completed. No. <laughs> I'm pretty thrilled that this went together as easy as it did. You know, not without me going through some effort that wasn't necessary, like emptying out that entire shelf under our sink. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm going to clean some dog hair out of here before I close it up, but otherwise, I think she's ready to run. I'm about to embark on a quest unlike any I've ever embarked on before. This is going to be a really good example of how big a pain in the ass it can be just to go pick up an item you order. Because our batteries are here. They're at Crowley. Incredibly inconveniently, they're not at the Crowley location that's right by Crown Bay Marina where I could just dingy over and literally walk 50 feet and pick them up. They're down by the airport and obviously we have no transportation. So I'm going to dingy over to Crown Bay to get me close and then I'm going to scooter to Crowley and then I'm going to call a taxi to get me back to Crown Bay. It's going to work flawlessly. Flawlessly! <laughs> Pick it up here. In boat life, you sometimes have to jump through an exceptional amount of hoops just to accomplish something that would literally take no effort in land life. But today, I didn't even care. The fun part now. For way too long, we'd been struggling to get by with an undersized house bank and no solid backup charging source for the days when solar wouldn't cut it. Finally, it looked like all the elements were going to come back together. No amount of hoops were too many.
And as our improving luck would have it, the lady at Crowley happened to be retiring the next day. We got a pretty sweet deal on the shipping. Whew. Phase one is complete. Now I just gotta go see what we've got waiting for us at the post office. Nothing for us at the post box, but I did run in and get the last little tidbit from the alternator job. So at least it wasn't a waste of a short trip. So I got our batteries. Now to put it all together. We rarely ever use the generator for air conditioning or anything else besides charging the batteries. We really didn't think we were going to miss it. This system might have been something we would have gone to sooner if we hadn't been just trying to preserve a very valuable piece of equipment. That's a firefly, all right. Here's your passage drink. I did make a passage I on the dinghy. It was a long passage. Anytime and you leave the boat now, <laughs> you deserve it. I should get three, one for the dinghy, one for the scooter, and one for the taxi ride. Oh, it's so good. All right, I'm gonna check the voltage of these things. Just make sure we're working with good stuff. Good uh, resting voltage for batteries that have been sitting for a long time. All right, how's it drink now? Passage drink. I walked to the front <laughs> of the boat and then back again. <laughs> 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 Nearly 700 amp hours of Firefly batteries. At last. We've got these two locations for the banks. And yes, everybody on a boat knows that ideally you want all your batteries together in the same nice little spot and you want all your cables to be the exact same length. And I don't know, you want the Tooth Fairy to bring you marshmallows and I don't know what that meant. But it doesn't happen. It's a boat. Like, unless you've got a 60-foot oyster, you don't have a spot big enough for a really big house bank. You've got a spot big enough for that kind of small house bank that you run your motor all the time or your generator. But if you want a big one, you've got to split it up. So you just have to do it the most intelligent way possible. And for us, that is four here, two here, and they are running in line with our positive connected to the first battery and our negative connected to the last battery. And that, folks, is the best we can do. And it works fine. Yes, you're going to have some fluctuations in voltage from battery to battery because they're pulling slightly more, slightly less, depending on how far they are from that first cable. And calm I down. Had it. It's fine. Is that song? You need to calm you down. You need to calm down. <laughs> you're being too loud. That's nailed why it. I'm the singer. Nailed it! <laughs> it's a sight that brings tears to my eyes right now. 54 amps going into our batteries right now. And obviously we're drawing anywhere from 10 to 20 amps. So we're talking about at least 70 amps going into our batteries right now at about 1,000 RPM. I mean, listen to that. Like, it's going to sound more obnoxious on video because all ambient noise uh, in the background always sounds crazy loud on video because the audio is meant to equalize things and bring some sounds up, others down. But trust me, it is. I'm talking at a, just a very normal, quiet level. It's, it's a purr. 
so nice. Before we had to be up, we had to be up around 1700 just to get anything out of that other alternator. And that's an annoying level of RPM for that motor in this boat. This is just, that's nothing. Oh, I'm so happy right now. And I just went and programmed in our new bank, which comes in at 696 amp hours of Firefly batteries. And much like lithium's Fireflies, you can calculate in quite a few more amp hours because you can run them down farther. Happily, we won't have to run them down very far because we have so much now. But Man, it's been like nine months I've been fighting to try to get these things, to get that one replaced. Uh, to their credit, they replaced it, but sorry, it was not simple. Some things just take a while when you're down here in the Caribbean trying to get stuff handled by email and shipped and it's just one of those things I can't I kind of can't believe like I actually have the batteries and we just put them in I'm, I'm sort of like the when the lady wins in the Miss America pageant and she's just sort of stunned you know I just wanted to say something about world peace and, and uh, family and uh, I don't know what else describe your perfect day <laughs> Well, me and my Firefly batteries, we would go out and have a drink at a bar in Charlotte Amalie. Then we'd probably come back for a nice romantic evening on Cecilia, where I'd plug them into the house bank. You obviously haven't seen a Miss Community Alley in a long time. Uh, Describe your perfect date. It's a tough one. <laughs> um, I'd have to say April 25th. Because it's not too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. <laughs> All you need is a light jacket. <laughs> no, I don't, watch I don't think I've ever seen that. That's epic. <laughs> what did you say you needed? For the camera, right? Yeah, it doesn't count unless it's on camera. Where where did you go today that you needed a passage drink? You went to the you went to the grocery store. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Let me let's show off your tooth. We haven't seen it yet. Like, the, the, the toothless wonder. <laughs> <laughs>